taken away with my big brother, my mum and dad, and put up in a hostel of B&B in Blackpool. It's coming up to Christmas time. Um, and in the bed and breakfast, there was just my mum and dad and my big brother, um, and three soldiers and the landlords, and we were dancing. I remember like it was Christmas Eve and dancing to, I really need to know the whole details. We just said it was a very special moment in my little five-year-old life. I was loving life. He was dan my dad was dancing around this ballroom with me. Um, and then he took me upstairs, popped me to bed. I went to sleep and then the soldiers came calling and they raped me. And that continued for a long period of time. For so long I can't even really remember it. Oh, trigger warning. Um, I think poetry should be triggering, absolutely. And if you do feel the trigger, it's because you're holding the gun. And it makes you powerful. But if you do feel like you need to get out um, and go, you know, have a little breather or go for a walk or buy me a drink, <laughs> um, for example, <laughs> um, please feel free to do that. It's all good. Um, so we're going to start the story the morning after. And I'm going to read from this book because it's a canto, which means a fair long poem, extended metaphor like Dante's Inferno. And normally it's the ones where people go, one. Like that, and they count through, and you can feel your life ebbing away. <laughs> so instead, I've started, I haven't really been able to do it properly here, but I'm, I'm starting to mark it with facts and figures about child sexual abuse. There were 63,000 cases of um, prosecutions of child sexual abuse. Um, in a one year period, so that's just the reported. Another interesting fact is if um, a boy child is sexually abused or raped, the uh, maximum prison sentence is life, as it should be. If a girl has the same, it's two years. That's all we really need to know about the way girls, females and males are treated. So we'll start the poem the morning after. <coughs> Songs my enemy taught me. Silence! was a song my enemy taught me. Blackpool. The bed is cold and my teeth are abandoned buildings and somewhere there is the smell of something burning a book, a flag, a letter. In my room at the top of the seaside hotel there is a single bed with a white sheet. I cannot think of anything to write on it. The bed is a slowly developing photograph. Here's us around the dinner table. We are smiling like carved meat. No one notices that the daughter is eating herself. Here's you walking home from school. Your shadow walks behind you as if Ashamed, even the trees whisper about you. You have embarrassed the wind. And here's him, and him, and him. A family portrait, successful, double folding their uniforms and ironing their smiles. Catching children delivered from the conveyor belt of their wives' wombs and holding them up to the bare light bulb to bless. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. They are boys. And here are the stairs. And here, the long corridor you are afraid to walk along. Perhaps it is your Cleveland. My womb is a war zone after everything is taken, after the soldiers have left, spitting into the palms of their hands, after the shelves have been emptied and only sell nothing, after the nothing gathers in great mountains at the sides of the streets, after the streets are running with hungry ghosts, after women's skins are slung from washing lines, after children write their names in the dust that once were their fathers, I carry the war in my womb. Perhaps this is what happened. Someone said my hymen was a door behind which rebels were making plans and they kicked it in, paced the room and filled their pockets with valuables. My mother's wedding ring, my first tooth, a bright blue hair bobble, your address. This 
They wanted to know where I was hidden. I am the corner of the room. I am a crying scene, an invaded land, an oil rich country. I will be divided equally between nations. Cluid. Twelve years old. There are small bodies washed up on the shores of my eyes. My photograph is taken. Another girl's face appears instead of mine. Rotherham. There are men seated quietly at municipal formica desks at the neck of my room. You do not look like your face, they say. Please state the purpose of the, your visit. Did you pack your face yourself? My sandbag hips, my barbed wire hill, many will die defending it, others will drown in the sediment of a trench whose walls are always caving in. My cunt is a bomb crater. The villagers gather round the edges of and peer into. Sometimes smoke rises from deep within. These are my ghosts. These are messages in a lost language. Capture them in jars. Display them on suburban mantelpieces, in memes, on t-shirts. Smile, hashtag smile. Women are crucified on hashtags across these dark hills. Islington. When you're impregnated by war, you give birth to bullets. Name them. Show them his scent. The palm of my small right hand is a creased map to safety. I am stopped at the border. I cannot remember my name in your language. My skin is a white flag. I am waving it now. I am holding my skin above my head. Stop shooting. Stop shooting. Stop shouting. War is an unexploded kiss buried. The battleground is the bedroom in which two people stand in opposing trenches behind sandbag pillows saying, <coughs> love you. Wrong. That's not how you say it. This is how you say it. My skin is partitioned. This bit is yours. Parts of my body speak different languages. After the war, I was colonized. Use my blood to power your generators. Dig deep in me for your gemstones. Harvest my hair and eyelashes. These drips of words on my chin. And you, you I give my womb to. Feed it well. Walk it when needed. Listen at night to its curling song. Bradford. The girl whose eyes are shallow graves beneath suburban patios goes to school. And rows of heavy wooden lidded desks are filled with the smiling dead. When the world ended, nobody noticed. Skeleton birds mutter. Bone songs, the sun has eaten itself. Her mother and father tell jokes about her. Everybody laughs. The girl whose eyes are foxholes laughs. The teacher laughs. Children gathered like litter around the stairwell laughs. The social worker laughs. The policeman laughs. The doctor laughs. The psychiatrist giggles. The world ends. Wrexham. I remember how silence was a choir. There's you in the kitchen, vibrato. There's you at the back of the class, soprano. There's you walking home, tenor. Your solo silences are everywhere, Oxford. That's not what I meant to say. I once witnessed to my own murder, it was Wednesday, it is always been Wednesday. After my death, people continued talking to me as though I was still there. After my death, people tried to hold me, but their hands passed through my skin. After my death, I came back to haunt myself, often catching glimpses of my ghost 
sitting in the same chair as me, speaking through my mouth ahead of me in the dinner queue, an ankle disappearing around a corner, my bright blue hair bubble dancing just out of reach in a crowd. Plymouth. When war was teething, it rubbed its soft teeth against pavements and trees and wallpaper and lovers. It refused to let go of my hand in public. I lost sight of war once in the park and its screams were sirens and the wail of bombs. I hit people I love. My bombing is imprecise. This is common. This is to be expected. Telford. In the hospital, she lies in bed. She has always lied in bed. They ask her questions and she focuses on the spelling of the answers. She is afraid she will not get them right. She cannot get them right. The true answer is the wrong answer. Stratford. They show her children who don't want to die. They are friendly. One offers food that she knows will eat her. She's shown a photograph of an ugly overdose. She is shown obituaries etched into fingernails. In his pockets, the man with the paper cut mouth has a box. It too is small. It too is velvet. Inside the box, mounted at the centre, is a large tear, collected one drip at a time from all the children in his care. Tears are crystal balls. If you look closely, he says, you can see your future. She leans close. She sees nothing. Manchester. When the talking begins, the villagers hide in cellars or run in the shade of trees to the other side of the hill. The girl with the dug out eyes watches them leave and stops speaking. <coughs> she talks to a piece of paper in her hand instead. People queue up to look at it. There are so many peering over her shoulder that she has to stand on the hill and read it out to everyone. They clap. They look pleased. She forgets what she is saying. Newcastle. For Christmas, I give my mother an uncomfortable truth. She wears it when I visit. Peterborough. At the core of every woman is the womb, that bright angry pearl formed of grit and lies encouraged and unreturned phone calls robbed for centuries against one another, they come to prize it out. It is a summer morning. When she awakens she is surrounded by strangers, stranded on islands of tight white beds, archipelagos strewn across the ward. She waves. But every stranded woman is waving to someone else who's waving to someone else. Ships pass and do not see them. Aylesbury. Later, I am dressed in bunting and songs are composed to keep my spirits up. Later, we are given ration books of kisses, three hand holdings a week, one dry night. There is never enough to go around. Grown men on street corners cower and wonder at the cracks cobwebbing their faces, not knowing they are smiles. Rotherham, Rotherham, Rotherham. After the war, there was singing. After the war, there were ceremonies of remembrance. We remember the living and finally carve our own names into our gravestone teeth. After the war, we set out to find others and guide them home. We lit fires in our windows and tapped more silver screwed rubble. Some rubble tapped back. Some rubble grew hands and we pulled on them until we had uprooted a forest of women, shaking their heads of soil, of shame, and brushing silence from their shoulders. Thank you, they said. Thank you.
We have been waiting. Thanks very much. Cheers.